So I've talked about the Jack specific Dragon Ball plug and play a while ago on this channel and this was basically the only one of these devices to come out in North America for the series. However, over in Japan, Bandai was taking a big swing with a line of consoles based on the Zavix line of fitness gaming consoles. Bandai was definitely no stranger to the gaming console industry, having attempted a move into the gaming market with the Bandai Wonderswan. Here, they were setting their eyes towards capitalizing on the fun fitness market which had found success in the gamification of exercise. And keep in mind the goal of a plug and play is generally never to replace or compete with the major console market. Bandai was not here attempting to take down the PlayStation 2 or the GameCube. They're usually meant to be a cheap and casual alternative for gamers who might not want to invest in a more serious gaming console. That said, the release of the Nintendo Wii would obviously end up eating into their market. And like with the Wonderswan, Bandai had access to a multitude of major IPs to pull from, and pull from them they did. We would see everything from Tamagotchi, Kamen Rider, Blue Dragon, Naruto, and of course Dragon Ball in One Piece. Japan would get a One Piece plug and play game in 2004 and three Dragon Ball devices before their eventual crossover console in 2008 developed as a celebration of the 40th anniversary of Weekly Shonen Jump magazine. The game's got a pretty long title. It's Dragon Ball Z Cross One Piece Gum Gum Kamehameha Wave Battle Sensation. With your voice, you can calm me up. Here, your main method of controls are two sensors that can be used to point on the screen, similar to the Wii remotes. And along with these, each one of these little devices featured their own little gimmick or special feature. For instance, one of these consoles allowed you to scan in your Dragon Ball trading cards. For the console we'll be talking about today, the gimmick is an included microphone which lets you pull off special moves and also summon characters when in battle. And there are a decent selection of support characters here. Most of the characters you'd expect are here, from Piccolo to Gohan to characters like Ace, Chopper, and Shanks. The really neat thing about this game, compared to other plug and play games around this time, and even in the Let's TV Play line, is that this one is in full 3D. Not exactly groundbreaking 3D, I'd probably put the graphics in line with the PlayStation 1 game, but as its own device that you could grab for around $40, that's not bad. There's six modes here, most of which are variations of the same core mode. These include a story mode, a time attack mode, a solo mode without partners, a mini game mode where you can play through some of the mini games you come across in the story, and a Vegeta aerobics mode which is meant to be like a daily exercise game, kind of similar to something you'd see in Wii Fit. There's also this dungeon mode where you're navigating a maze Persona 1 style and you have to shout the names that are given on screen in order to defeat the enemy and choose a path. I guess this was to help kids read or pronounce stuff, maybe? Very interesting inclusion. In terms of the main gameplay for this crossover, like most of the Let's TV Play console games, this is an on-rail shooter, similar to something like Time Crisis. You're essentially in first person and you have to defeat the enemies on screen. You can select a partner character to join you two during battle as well as a support character and you can even combine to do team special moves. The enemies are pretty much your basic sprites but you've got a pretty cool assortment of boss enemies who are mainly in 3D. You'll fight enemies like Crocodile and Luchi and then on the Dragon Ball side characters like Metacooler, Broly, and Omega Shinron. It's pretty awesome that they include GT stuff in here too or at least I think there is uh, as I wasn't able to make it too far. Seriously, Lushi was kicking my butt. The bosses you fight in the story mode depends on if you're choosing Goku or choosing Luffy, where Luffy is typically going to be fighting uh, the Dragon Ball characters and Goku is going to be fighting the One Piece characters. And each of these boss characters have their own unique animations and attack patterns. They're not just sprites moving around the screen like the basic enemies. I could really see a game like this existing somewhere like Dave and Buster's. Well, that is if this game actually controlled well. Maybe I didn't calibrate my device well, but I could not get these guys to detect correctly the entire time I was playing. 
The cursors would either flicker in and out or wouldn't allow me to track to the ends of the screen, which is important in terms of selecting your support characters or launching special moves. Also, the cursors just feel sluggish to move around, which is a problem when a lot of this game revolves around moving the cursors in a specific motion. Can't really say this game is English importer friendly either. Almost constantly the game will ask you to shout out technique names or character names to activate against bosses. You might be able to guess what the technique is given who's being presented on screen, but even then the nature of Japanese voice recognition means you're going to have to say the Japanese name as a Japanese person would say it. The unit that I got already had a save file set up and had progressed through some of the story which was useful because there's no way I would have been able to complete this without the amount of text you need to read and understand. And you might be thinking to yourself, this all in concept sounds like Dragon Ball Z Connect and probably ask what makes this game better than that? And Nothing really. In fact, Dragon Ball Z Connect might just be more fun to play, in my opinion. Definitely more responsive, and that's saying something. But a lot of this all comes down to the niche they fill. Dragon Ball Z Connect was just one of what seems like hundreds of Connect games, whereas these little plug and play consoles make for cool standalone pieces of hardware that aren't necessarily meant to be the best game ever. They're more toys than anything, and Honestly, the amount to do in this game supersedes anything that I would have expected. There's basically a whole RPG system here where you can gain levels and change your loadouts. Uh, a lot of love went into this game. Speaking of which, the packaging on this guy is really good. So good that I basically had it sitting on my desk for five months just because I didn't want to open this guy up. You'd think a cool device like this would be rare, but I essentially bought this guy from Amazon Japan for about $50, with most of that being taken by shipping. Uh, these guys seem to be fairly popular, enough to warrant a fairly sizable inventory. The less TV play device that does seem to be hard to find though is the Naruto one, which features a cool ninja glove to use in the game. I haven't really been able to find that guy for a reasonable price anywhere, but it's definitely going to be on my instant buy list if I ever get the chance. Like I mentioned, there are actually a lot of plug and play games from Bandai, and I'd love to talk more about them in the future, if only to make sure their presence on YouTube doesn't disappear to the sands of time. If you want to see more videos like this, just me talking about somewhat obscure hardware and tech, make sure to like this video and maybe subscribe. It really helps me figure out what exactly my audience wants to see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and bye.